In a context of rising inflation, a recession that's probably coming, and uncertainty building up across the board, it's crucial that you have your finances in order and that you're prepared for the potentially worse things to come. In today's video, I'll tell you the six most effective and highest leverage ways you can lower your costs in Copenhagen while at the same time living a comfortable and happy life, again, without having to make way too many sacrifices. Number one is to own your house or apartment. Renting in Denmark, it's borderline crazy. It's very, very expensive, and especially in Copenhagen itself. So especially also if you want to now have a flat fully for yourself and for your family. Unless you get a very good rent control deal or you can get subsidized public housing, which again for expats is kind of out of the question, you'll almost always be better off owning your place versus renting it out. This is because in Denmark mortgages have been extremely cheap for long, though that's you could say changing now, but still like the running costs of owning a flat are low in comparison versus what you would be paying for rent, even with a higher interest. For example, for this flat that you can see here in Istanbul, it's over 100 square meters. I pay now a bit less even or almost roughly the same I was paying for my 50 square meter tiny rental just a few years back. So again, this is easier said than done. But if you want to have more money in your pocket, and again, if you want to prioritize cash flow and have more money at the end of the month, this is the highest leverage way you can get there. Of course, you need to make an investment and it's not something you can do from one moment to the other. But again, when it comes to cash flow, this is super important. And no surprise, again, in this channel, there's a lot of deep dives on financial independence and so on, but also focus specifically on housing. Number two is to not own a car. So Denmark is one of the most expensive places in the world, if not the most expensive likely, to buy and own a car. So you pay a vehicle registration tax in Denmark, this registration as gift is called, that can reach over 150% on the value of the car. And by the way, that's before you apply the MOMS or VAT, so this 25% sales tax that you actually would then put on top of the price of the car, which is insane. And that's again, just for buying the car. Any car that would cost you, I don't know, 20,000 euro in Germany might cost you like 30 or 40,000 here. And again, and that's again just to own the car then actually to be running the car and keeping it as one of your things in life can be actually also even more expensive. Now, if you live in Copenhagen, my suggestion for most people is that you should just bike or use public transportation as much as possible. Of course, there are certain cases where it might make sense to own a car. I mean, if you work very far and it's just saving you a lot of time, okay, then own a car. But if you want to save money, the public transportation options and again, the biking infrastructure in Copenhagen is fantastic. Again, and if you need a car every once in a while, you can just use one of the car sharing services when you need one. This is of course easier said than done for some people. You know, having a car is a big part of their life and their identity. My take here, and it's a bit of a contrarian take, is that you might be in many cases better off having a higher mortgage and living closer to the city and without needing a car than if you live further into the suburbs with a cheaper house at the same time needing a car to go pretty much anywhere. If you have a family like I have myself and I have a wife and two kids, it's something that of course it would be sometimes more comfortable to have a car and do this and that. But overall, we're just saving so much money by not having this and like living close to the city and living even close to like parks and infrastructure that just makes it incredibly convenient. And it's again something that you can do in a city like Copenhagen that you can't do in other places in Denmark and in other places around the world even. Now, if you expected to join this video and hear about coupons and how to save money on net and so on, this is not the case. I mean, we're talking about high leverage things here and housing and transportation are, in my opinion, and probably objectively as well, you could say the two highest fixed expenses for the average family. So there you go. If you save on housing and you save on transportation, you'll be again far better off than if you do all the things I'm going to tell you now, which are still important. But again, like the higher level of things are like get a cheap housing deal that's good and also get like, your transportation costs under control. And number three is to avoid bank fees. So Danish banks are amazing at charging you money without you knowing about it or without you understanding that they're actually charging you all this money. Number one and case in point is that every time you use your Danish cards abroad, when you use your Dancord or Mastercard Gold or you name it, you pay a 1.5% fee on everything that you buy In if you buy something in euros. And if you pay something on dollars or any other currency, we're talking about dirhams or Argentinian pesos or you name it, you pay a 2% fee. So that means that when you think you're spending a thousand krona abroad, you will actually be spending up to 1,020 krona. This might not sound a lot, but the moment you travel a lot or you buy a lot of things abroad with your Dancord, this can sum up to a lot of money. Because I traveled so much and I have traveled so much for many years, I would say that at least by being aware of this and all these fees that you might pay with your Dancord, I have saved over a thousand kronas per year, or we probably even saved more as a whole family, just because I was aware of this and like worked on the solution. And the solution again for most people is just to get a Revolut account. Revolut is one of these online banking services that basically gives you a way to avoid these fees. And again, which the banks don't really tell you. I mean, it's of course in their terms and conditions, but when you go and pay abroad, it's not that it tells you, hey, you're going to pay 2% on this fee. So of course, Revolut is just an online bank. There's other options as well. There's one called TransferWise. There's one called N2 
26. There are multiple options. I have been using Revolut myself for six or seven years. I completely recommend it. Something you can do again to avoid paying these fees. But again, this is just the top of the iceberg in terms of fees that you can pay or you might not be aware of to pay. So in Denmark, for having a bank account, actually most people pay fees just to again have the bank account. When you have to pay something, pay a bill or transfer money to friends within the same bank or other banks, sometimes you actually have to pay fees as well. A lot of things are negotiable, but again, like just be aware of this, right? So to have a bank card, to have a fancy credit card, you need to pay fees. When you deposit money, when you withdraw money from an ATM, even in your own country, but also when you go abroad. And again, like there's even a fee, at least in Nordia that I am aware of, that if you spend more than 30,000 kroner in one month with your bank card, you need to actually pay up to Acti activate the bank or to pay more. And there's again also fixed money fees to try to transfer money abroad and a lot more. Key thing here is that you can negotiate away a lot of these fees. So it's all a negotiation. And again, I made a course that I explained a lot of the things about bank negotiation, especially focus on buying a house and mortgages and so on. But again, how to get yourself out of a lot of these fees. Next up is to work in a big company. It's crazy that if you work in a corporation in Copenhagen, and you could actually say also in Denmark as well, like as a whole, right? And also not even in a corporation itself, just it can also be a small Danish company. You get so many perks as an employee that you actually save a lot of money when you actually start working. So we're talking about food as breakfast and lunch. That's what we get in Maersk. You also get a gym membership in a lot of places. You get a phone, you get internet connection, massage in some places, and discounts for restaurants. We even have a discount for Tivoli or for the zoo in our company. Again, like this is not something that you get only in the two or three big companies. This is basically the case in almost all Danish companies. And even I could say some smaller companies get even better perks than the big ones. I am aware that not everyone can work for a company. For example, a lot of people are entrepreneurs, so they have their own consulting business, or they don't work for a company that has enough employees to make this at a scale. But just be aware of that if you go and work in one of these companies, you're gonna lower your cost dramatically. So for example, myself, I save over 300 kron a month of not having to pay for a gym membership because we have a gym at the office. I save on food because we have a breakfast and lunch at the office, and even can sometimes take away for a very low price lunch food to work to home as well. I don't have to pay for my phone. I mean, you do pay taxes on, on a lot of these things but again it's a lot lower on the big scheme of things that is to actually be paying these things out of your pocket this comes to the supermarkets and again you don't have like the multiple running clubs so if you want to run a marathon you get those fees subsidized by a company this is the same when we used to work in Carlsberg we got a lot of these things as well plus free beer so again like this is a lot of things that you can get in Denmark which is pretty cool and it can mean serious money I reckon that with my family that my wife also works in a company we could actually save thousands of kron a month just for this even though I also like this entrepreneurship thing as well it's something that you also need to consider when you make that balance of entrepreneur company number six is to use government free stuff so there's a lot of free stuff in Copenhagen I would say in Denmark as a whole as well but Copenhagen especially I made a whole bit of about it you can find it linked over here but in short biggest one is education so I studied my master's in the Copenhagen business school it was free and like really free so it's an incredible blessing that you can actually get a top tier education without having to pay for anything again I'm not talking about the MBA that one need to pay but like for if you want to do a bachelor's or a master's in a university that's free if you're European and there are certain conditions but also people that are not from Europe you can get a scholarship that is not so or at least you didn't used to be so competitive as well to get that as well so I think like if you want to further your education as an expat this is a great place to be and again this is high leverage life-changing stuff. I mean, this is something that if you want to do it out of your pocket, you might need to get in depth for many years to actually pay it off. Then one more thing you can get for free in Copenhagen, and I, that's something that I especially find it very exciting, is that you can get free office space. So if you're an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur, you have multiple startup hubs that have offered free space or almost free space. And a lot of the perks I mentioned for companies, like they might not have all that, but they do have some things like, okay, they have a nice kitchen, they have free coffee and so on. So when I started my very unsuccessful second business uh, many years ago, I actually used a lot of this free office space and it was a really a blessing because it actually helped me keep costs down and because of that trying to invest as much as possible into the business as well if you have kids there's a ton of free or very cheap services and activities for kids if you give birth to a child in Denmark that's all free and all the check stuff before and after that's good all the healthcare related things like vaccines as well for the kids that's also for free again there's certain vaccines I need to pay but I mean the general vaccine plan is very robust they're also heavily subsidized childcare and kindergartens and even the school itself is completely free if you want to have children in Denmark and also specifically in Copenhagen as well it's a lot cheaper than you would have it in other countries in Europe last on free stuff is that you have DR which is the this Danish broadcaster that basically has a lot of contact on Netflix. You have podcasts and you can even watch football there for free. You have R. Olin, where it's an app that you can use to read books and audiobooks. 
and again it has a huge catalog also in English as well so it's not only in Danish you can loan multiple types of books you can also get Danish classes for the first two years after you move to Denmark for free as well so I have my reservations on if that's the best way you can learn Danish but the option is there and for many people it's also an opportunity to meet new friends and get to know more of the culture my last point is that you shouldn't buy stuff in Denmark as I said Denmark is the most expensive country in the European Union also not just for everything as a whole but also specifically for consumer goods so it's brutal we have a 25% BAT or MOMS which is basically a killer so if you look at the prices of things like the iPhones as well and so on Denmark often is the number one in Europe if not I mean sometimes not in the world but it's still like pretty high up my take here is that if you need to buy a very expensive piece of electronics for example a fancy camera or a computer as well many times you're better off buying it abroad this applies to both inside and outside the EU just mind that of course if you want to do this the right way if you buy something abroad specifically if you're buying something outside of the EU it costs more than 3,000 kronas you actually when you come into the airport you need to go to the left and go and declare this as a okay you have something to declare most people don't do that like a lot of Danes don't do it but again like the fact is that if you want to follow the rules you need to do that there's so much difference between the prices in a place like oh no Japan or the US and it's in Denmark that you now sometimes you can save a lot of money as well like a tip here is that if you don't want to do this and you want to buy stuff in Denmark as well you have private market for secondhand goods so all things from electronics to kids clothes as well and so on you have actually excellent value if you are willing not to get the shiniest newest thing you can actually get secondhand things that are really really good and really well priced once you have saved a lot of money the next step you should take is to start investing and starting the journey of financial independence for that you should check this video over here where I explain the simplest way to get started investing in Denmark and again when you do so pay the lowest possible taxes thanks for watching I'll talk to you again next week